Hi, I'm Peter Meyer. I'm reporting on some U.S. government internal wikis, enterprise wikis that uh, that have come up at this conference in past years. I'm I'm off duty. This is all unofficial things I happen to know. Um, since a couple of years ago, we have monthly calls for people running enterprise media wikis in the U.S. government. Um, run by Tom O'Neill, hosted at the Department of Energy, where we, where we might demo, demonstrate something online to one another, uh, or discuss some common issue, or show off a template or an extension. Um, anybody who wants to join, please contact us. There's some way to get the list server to sign you up automatically, but I'm not sure it's been proven to work for us yet. We're a category, uh, we're a community of practice for MediaWiki, and we'll be listed at digital.gov at some point. So email us if there's, if there's a, a need to. The information I'm going to tell you comes from those particular MediaWikis from which somebody is calling into, into this. So there are a lot of MediaWikis, including many government people here, which are very expert, um, of which I will not mention. But here's a few big ones. Diplopedia is hosted by the US State Department for foreign affairs purposes. And they run other uh, knowledge platforms and services for the State Department and the other foreign affairs uh, institutions. It's been running since 2006 and grown steadily. It's got tens of thousands of content pages. Recently, a single sign-on was implemented, so the number of registered users went way up, uh, tens of thousands of them. They get thousands of page views per day, and they're they have a search capability that finds information on the wiki as well as elsewhere on their intranet. Most of the content, the attention goes to content that is administrative, such as HR information. But they have a lot that's distinctive and different from other wikis having to do with posts in, around the world. Um, and they're interacting with other agencies like USAID, um, the USDA has a foreign agriculture service, and there are people working in embassies who are not employees of the US government who sometimes have access. And yet there's also a classified version of it. So classified content is kept separate. This is a recurring problem for a number of US government wikis, is that they want it to be open, but some of the information is secret. Um, one thing that happens distinctively on Diplopedia is that they have lots and lots of biographies of officials in the various countries where people are posted. That's the kind of information they need that most of us don't need. So they're writing what are like Wikipedia articles about very particular people they have to interact with and do business with in, a, in another country. Um, and their staff rotate every three or four years. So one thing that happens is that somebody gets very interested, some manager is deeply into it, and they take on a big project, and they fill in a lot of content, and that person leaves, and it gets out of date. It's irregular, seasonal. Um, in the early years, there was a problem with bandwidth to some of these faraway places, but apparently MediaWiki was not bad on that dimension. It wasn't a problem for, for Diplopedia. They now have a visual editor offered, and that helps people get in, be happy, edit. Um, they will need to move to the cloud, and apparently that's coming. I, I believe it'll be the Azure cloud, and that will be better for mobile users, which is a recurring theme on these platforms, but the platforms I'm familiar with don't have that issue. But mobile users will get more easily to it if they don't have to once it's on the cloud. Okay, and they're looking to perhaps switch to a big distribution that includes lots of extensions that they don't have to customize. Powerpedia is hosted by the US Department of Energy, which has only the order of 100,000 employees and contractors who can see it. Users must register to edit it, and they have more than 4,000 registered users, 11,000 articles, lots of discussion, many portals, and they've been running Visual Editor for a year. That's gone well. That helps people in. They recently started running on the AWS cloud, and that is expected to make it easier to upgrade and to test extensions. Tom O'Neill is the one who runs that. 
and is a, you've seen his email already. Okay, Statopedia was my baby for a long time. That was for statistical agencies, but also anyone in the government because I thought a US government-wide one would be so useful. And it took a lot of heroics and a lot of help, also a lot of opposition. It was running, uh, hosted by the Environmental Protection Agency for eight years. Now it's been shut down as if they were pushing us to do something different and wouldn't keep running MediaWiki. That's a tragedy for me personally. We got to 2,900 content pages, but it was hard to get people on board. It didn't have much official support. It wasn't recognized as a work activity to contribute to this knowledge base. Um, and I thought most importantly, there was no single sign-on. So one had to sign in distinctively to this application. Not, it wasn't just automatically recognized uh, when a person logged into their government computer. But we didn't have any scandal. There was no security problem, no discipline problem, no leak of information. And we received Freedom of Information Act requests for information on this wiki. And I thought that was going to be hard to deal with, but it was not hard. EPA just has a policy. Uh, my colleague over there printed or copied the information, eliminated, redacted the personal information of who had edited an article or, or you know, personal information. And they just sent it out. And that worked well. Um, and some of the content survives or will pop up somewhere from Statopedia. I'm hoping that there will be a government-wide one in the future. Intellipedia is a great story. This is across at least 16 intelligence agencies in the US government. There are multiple levels of secrecy and classification. So there are multiple wikis on different networks with different levels of secrecy. I've seen only briefly the unclassified one. It has hundreds of thousands of articles. There's a substantial Wikipedia article about it, not completely up to date. Intellipedia arose in uh, 2006, 7, 8 because there was a, a concern that the intelligence agencies needed to address diffuse threats and connect the dots. And that means people in dispersed places should be putting information into the system that they thought might be useful. Uh, it's an interesting in organizational innovation. So that is for these highly secret, distinct agencies to share information with one another was not easy. Uh, the founders are kind of heroic, Don Burke and Sean Dennehy among them. And I've had them over to my agency a couple of times to give talks. And the talk goes over well, and then we don't do the same thing. Uh, regarding updates, I have no new information. It's all redacted. <laughs> I'm sure it's very exciting, but I don't know anything. I can't tell you anything. Wikita is the name of a relatively new wiki at the International Trade Administration. That's part of the Department of Commerce. They have 400 people at headquarters who can edit it rather easily, and then 1,500 in the field who cannot very easily edit it. But they also have people in embassies around the world who can see Diplopedia and may and find that one probably easier to use. A person must register to edit it. Most of the content is administrative as opposed to the content of a trade deal. It's about how to do reserve a conference room and do records management um, and HR principles. They have some ongoing knowledge management metadata initiatives that this may integrate with. Blanche Ziv is the, is the initiator of it. And she was in touch with our group on these MediaWiki calls. And we helped and you know helped set it up. But people outside the agency don't have access. She makes it um, fun and contacts new people when they register. So I think that's a mountain of work to, to communicate with each new person and welcome them in. But she got an award for that. And uh, it works. And she thinks it's well established. They will have to move it to the cloud to make it easier for remote people and people on mobile platforms to use. And it is not clear how that will happen, but she may be able to. OK, there are lots more, including people, uh, experts in this room uh, from NASA, um, Kurt from Los Alamos. These are high tech, um, often secret wikis using advanced features that I haven't seen. The people at uh, NREL uh, Energy Labs run a giant advanced semantic media wiki, openei.org, um, with energy related information like um, information on renewables. There are several other agencies with um, 
wikis that I have seen or used. They're often helpful for interagency purposes because each agency is running its own computer systems and then when there's an interagency team, they don't have a place to put their stuff. So that's a thing we can address with these interagency wikis, but they don't actually expand all the way across the government. Nuclear Regulatory Commission will be starting soon a wiki. That's Tom and Paula there who will be doing it. That um, is booting up. So we're already in space. Now we're going nuclear. Um, I wanted to mention also that there are some government agencies that have Wikipedians in residence. And while they're not working on an enterprise wiki, they're learning our system, our way of doing things, our syntax, our customs. And I think that's quite useful. I'm in touch with some of those people. Uh, it came up earlier today. Someone asked, is the census uploading information, like the US Census or any of them, very few government statistical agencies upload anything to Wikidata or even systematically to Wikipedia. I'm kind of surprised because they're supposed to make that information quickly available, but it would be good if when the populations or unemployment rates are updated, that was quickly in Wikidata and therefore available around the world um, and by API. It's not happening yet, to my knowledge. I had the I have some themes that I said two years ago and they're the same. I would like everybody in the government to be able to get to a common platform, share templates, share information, compare across the agencies. The Canadian government does have a wiki like that, GCpedia. I don't have a recent update on it. Um, I'm collecting government examples and if people want to be in touch either, either on this mailing list or just let me know what's going on for media use in government, I'm collecting. It seems straightforward to do better than we now do. Anybody should be able to look up the thousands of abbreviations we have and which ones are the same or different across agencies. Our many terms, we want to develop the custom of having sourced information with footnotes. All that can be straightforward, but there are lots of people who are working in an agency that doesn't give them that. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty that some information online will be made bad because anybody could edit it, but in fact, there are very few examples of that misbehavior. These professional systems, as you know, don't have that problem very much. So, wiki activity in the government grows slowly and is almost invisible. And there ha it hasn't been controversial. It hardly changed with the, with the change of administrations. It's not partisan or political. High officials don't really see that it's happening, as far as I can tell. Once in a while, I can collar one of them and I ask them about it. Do you know about this? Um, I talked to a congressperson not very long ago who I thought would be familiar with one of these systems. Didn't recognize it. Candidates for office never say that we're going to do this, that is, have a common system. Sometimes they will come out in favor of knowledge management, but it won't be something simple and direct like this. I guess it doesn't grab the imagination, but it could be that in the future we'll have more and more of this and integrate more and more across governments, and I'm interested in what other governments do too. Thank you. Questions? So, um, first of all, personal note, Peter is one of the first uh, Wikimedians I met from the big world outside of Wikipedia. Uh, and I met him in Poland, actually, so, you know, at the Wikimania there. I think that was you, wasn't it? It was. I've been around a long time. It, it was you. Anyway, um, so you mentioned something about government publishing information out there. I think the reason for that is is that they have the same attitude that a lot of these uh, organizations like Wikimedia has about content on Wikipedia that they'll just farm out that work to the users. That They publish the information. It's out there. It's someone else's responsibility to put it on Wikipedia. And, and you know, the users give them an out and they go do it. So, you know, I, I think it's, they don't see a reason to do more than they're doing because it's already getting up there pretty quickly. I'd like to respond to that. 
Um, no. They, they put out news releases. They put out website pages. Each of these is a new effort. Uh, they offer data by API. That's new-ish. This is another form in which they can make it available. Or, um, or some other institution could do it, but if the, if the agency itself that's releasing information does it, then it'll be done right, and they will get it done on time, potentially. So I think part of reaching out to the, to the citizens is to do that. But it's true that they don't have to. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.